Okay, let's talk about the general managers' meetings and the storylines. We'll start with the New York Yankees. That's why that logo is the first one on the board. This is unique. All these players had the chance, had opt-out clauses in their contract, could opt out, become free agents, or opt out and negotiate an extension. Garrett Cole, the ace of the Yankees, opted out of his contract. Now, he had four years, $144 million left in the original deal. He had the right to opt out. It would have given him an opportunity to talk about a 50-year extension with the Yankees. The Yankees came back to him and said, if you're opting out, we're going to let you go on the market. And we let you go on the market, you might not get $36 million a year or $40 million per year. Right. So they said, you think about that. You're with a team who's in a World Series. You're the ace of the staff. You're in the biggest market of the world, the Yankee tradition. Maybe you should stay here at $36 million per year over the next four guaranteed <laughs> rather than go in the market and think you can get better. Garrett Cole thought about it for 12 hours, got back to the Yankees, and rescinded his opt-out. He's staying. He's not going back into the marketplace. So that's item one. Second item, the Yankees have reached the finish line with first baseman Anthony Rizzo, beset by a lot of injuries, did not hit, lost his bat speed. They're not picking up the $17 million option, so that gives them money to use. They've had dialogue with Juan Soto and Scott Boros. Scott Boros made the comment, we're going to listen to everybody. We'll only talk to the teams that have a commitment to winning. Well, you're at Yankee Stadium. There is a commitment from the Steinbrenners. But Scott Boros is going to take this process out into December, probably into January, play the prices right. The Yankees, as an insurance policy, this week at the GM's meetings, made contact with Pete Alonso, ah. and then talked to Scott Boros, by the way, who is Pete Alonso's agent. So the Yankees are looking outside if Soto goes somewhere else, but I don't think there's a lot of places for Soto to go. Okay, so that's, that's the Yankee storyline. Boston Red Sox. Guess who they contacted? Blake Snell. Ah. Red Sox have obviously a history of spending. Uh, are obviously, in recent two years' time, have paired the payroll to get below the luxury tax. They're ready to go back into the marketplace and spend. They need veteran pitching because they force-fed a lot of young guys. They've been in a rebuild. They a lot of young guys in the everyday roster. Red Sox, I thought, played pretty well considering there's no veterans there. They're talking to Blake Snell. But that price tag because he's represented by Scott Boris, is going to be mega. Now, can the Bo Sox convince Blake Snell? You can pitch in Fenway Park. You want to come here. This is the state-of-the-art price. We'll pay you because they have paid state-of-the-art prices prior. But we're not sitting here in a holdout situation for $40 million per year because we're never given a pitcher that kind of money. The Boston Blake Snell. Cubs. Cubs are shuffling some papers. Cubs are going after Corbin Burns, ex-Milwaukee ace. Baltimore's frontline veteran. He wants, obviously, multi year big money, but the Cubs have got the budget space and are looking for frontline pitching. That kind of makes sense to me. Toronto, I should say Texas. This is a different story off the field. Remember Skip Schumacher? Yeah. Popular guy, ex Cardinal, ex Padre, then became a coach, then managed in Miami for two years. Opted out of his last contract in Miami. Many thought was going to the White Sox. Evidently decided, no, I don't want to go to Chicago because of the Reinsdorf situation and how bad it is over there. He's gone to Texas. He's gone as the assistant to the president of the Texas Rangers, Chris Young. Nice. Relationship. He's going to get Schumacher, bright baseball guy, very much respected. He's going to become a front office executive. He's going to be the assistant to the president. So great, great learning curve there for him. Oakland Athletics logo. Uh, they had a deadline this week. All Major League teams have to submit to Major League Baseball the structure of their marketing program for 2025. New logo, whatever. Oakland Athletics have informed Major League Baseball their logo will be the A's. Just the A's, just the Athletics. No mention at all Sacramento, where they're going to play. So they will be the athletics with either the elephant logo or the A's logo, but no reference at all to their mailing address for the next three years in Sacramento. Some people in Sacramento are not real happy with that. And the final topic is Arizona. You know, we talked a lot about Scott Boris, the agent. Do you remember last winter, John, when we were going back and forth? He held all of his clients out, and they, 
Arizona, at the last minute, wind up signing Jordan Montgomery, who had won a World Series ring the year prior in Texas. Jordan Montgomery got to camp late, pitched really poorly, got hurt, came back into the rotation, got shelled, got sent to the bullpen. About two weeks ago, Ken Kendrick, the owner, said the amount of money they paid Jordan Montgomery was $21 million per year on a three-year deal. It was the worst investment he ever made in baseball, and he blamed himself for doing it. So now you've got a pitcher who's been told you are a horrible investment. And the question is, how does this guy come back to pitch for Arizona knowing what the owner of the team thinks about him and said publicly, which I thought was a stupid thing to say. Well, now Mike Hazen, the general manager, met with Montgomery and has indicated that he will shop Montgomery in a trade. But who wants, who wants the next two years at $42 million for a guy that couldn't stay in the Arizona rotation? So Arizona gave him a bad contract. He didn't live up to the contract because he was hurt and he pitched really poorly. And then the owner badmouths him. Man, Arizona, boy, they put, put themselves into a bad situation. So, John, those are hot topics on the table. You tell me where you're going to go. You want to talk Yankee Stadium, Fenway Park, Wrigley Field, talk uh, Skip Schumacher? Go ahead. We're getting, like, comments here from the live stream viewers that your mic isn't working. What the hell's going on around here? I'm trying to debug it as we're talking. So, anyways, uh, just a comment. Garrett Cole taking, taking the, uh, you know, the bird in the hand rather than two in the bush because there's nowhere else he can go. Uh, the the Sacramento has got to be pissed off at the oh. A's. I mean, that is so disrespectful. You know, even if it's just for a couple of years, just go with that, you know. Oh, they're saying my microphone isn't working either. What the heck are they saying here? So let me go back and check something here. Aha. Okay, is it working now? You tell me. Hopefully it's working now. Somebody, somebody in the chat box, tell us if we're live or if we're dead. <laughs> we don't have technical problems, and I will tell you, these podcasts are sometimes difficult to get off and running. Okay. No, you're good. So, okay, we're good now. Okay, so I think I had a setting wrong. You can blame me for that. Um, okay, comment on Garrett Cole electing to stay where he is and renege on his I want out clause. You know, where else can he go? I mean, he's getting $36 million a year. I was just doing the math. There's No one else is going to pay him more than that. I mean, unless it's a creative thing like Verlander. Didn't he get like 40 Yeah. You know? So I think Garrett Cole, he did the smart thing and just, you know, re-upped. He's got a contract. Take the money, you know? Uh, the Soto situation. Is there a place for him to really go? And by the way, Scott Boros said this morning at the GM's meetings, we're not going to talk to anybody about deferred money. We're not doing onotonic contracts. So that, that throws another complication into it. Soto, I mean, there's very few places he can go, right? I mean, you figure the two New York teams and the Dodgers. I mean, could you imagine like a wild card like the Mariners or someone else stepping up and, and poning up the money? I don't see it happening. Not for that kind of money. What do you think about Blake Snell, Boston? Interesting. But still, I think Blake Snell, he struggles, you know, in the early part of the year. The Boston media and fan base aren't going to put up with that goofiness that he has early on. So that might not be a good fit. And Schumacher in Texas to be a front office guy. That's a dude, man. Yeah. Schumacher is a dude. And I'm, I'm happy for him. It's funny how there's all these Padre connections with the Texas Rangers. Uh, so, you know, there was no good place to go. Venable ends up taking the White Sox gig, you know, so he left. It's just he fill in for Venable, Venable. Or was Venable was like a bench coach, wasn't he? Yeah, in Texas for Bochi. Uh, Will Venable has been all over the place learning curve. He was with the Giants prior to that. Yeah. Uh, Houston. So he's learned at the foot of some pretty good people. You almost said Max Venable. I know, his dad. <laughs> yeah, I remember him playing for the Giants back when I was a kid. So good on Schumacher. He's an asset to wherever he lands. Okay, all things baseball. You got an opinion about Soto, opinion about what Garrett Cole realized? Feel free to join us. And if we're having microphone problems, we apologize. We'll just try to soldier on through this.